of the king. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her, upon her head, and made her queen instead of Vashti. We are going to appreciate God. Lord, we thank and praise you for the coming testimonies of strange and dramatic promotions that all genuine sons and daughters of the international shall possess and enjoy all through this year 2020. Shall open a mouth and return all the glory unto him. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory for the coming testimonies, strange and dramatic promotions that all genuine sons and daughters of this commission shall possess and enjoy all through the year 2020 in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We return all the glory unto him go ahead and thank him he has said our thanksgiving father we thank you take all the glory we appreciate you in jesus name we have prayed now before we go any further let me quickly say this to uh, prayer coordinators coordinators and pastors when you are leading prayers pay attention to the scriptures don't add words where there are no words don't remove words where there are words if you have ever read Revelation, I saw a very scary scripture. I don't read it from the altar. I have my reasons. He said, anyone that adds to the word of God, affliction shall be added. Anyone that removes, something will be removed. I don't read that scripture from the altar. So, I know you are trying to meet up with time. You are trying to be sharp and quick. But pay close attention so that you don't jump the word. You can't read the Bible and ignore like you saw Christ Jesus. You said Jesus. Those are very er dangerous errors. Please, prayer coordinators, take note of this. Praise the Lord. The same applies to you. When you read the Bible, don't, don't jump scriptures. Don't jump scriptures. You know, there are certain scriptures we know offhand, but if you read them from the Bible, they are different from what you know. There are certain word placements that we miss. We just read them because we have an idea. So make sure you get them. That scripture is a revelation. It's anybody who adds to the word. Problem will be added. Anybody who subtracts, problem will be subtracted. If you want that scripture, my peer will give you later. I'll give him to give you. I won't read it from the earth. Praise God. How many of us are happy to be in God's presence today? Now, how many can say that God has been good to them? Irrespective of everything you have been through. Shall we all lift our hands and give glory to the God who has been good to us? Now, let it not be that you are thanking him because I'm the one asking you to thank him. Let it be that you are thanking him because he has done you well. Let it not be that you are thanking him because other people are thanking him. Let it be that you are thanking him because he has shown you favor. Give him all the glory from the depths of your heart. Give him all the praise from the depths of your heart. Appreciate the Lord your God from the depths of your heart. Return the glory to him. Let it come from your heart. God will not accept anything that is not coming from your heart. God will not accept anything that is not coming from your heart. In Jesus' name. We have given thanks. Lastly, we'll be asking God to speak to you. God will not bring you out of your house to this place for nothing. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. Lord, this morning, in this service, the next service, the evening service, fill me to overflowing. Bless me by your word. Touch me by your word. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Touch me. When God touches a man, the man we know, the world we know. Touch me, Lord. In 
Jesus' name we have prayed. God has heard us. Shall we give him thanks for hearing us? Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise, mighty God. In Jesus' most precious name. Before you take your seat, I'd like us to pray from Psalm 138, verse 8. We'll just take the A part of it. Psalm 138, verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. You will prophesy by the Spirit of God. This is my year of fulfillment. Lord, perfect everything that concerns me. Raise your voice, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. This is my year of fulfillment. All round fulfillment. Lord, perfect everything that concerns me. This is my year of all round fulfillment. Lord, perfect everything that concerns me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Please, you may be seated and give Jesus a big clap as you do that. Praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Someone that wants the heaven to open over you, praise the Lord. Someone that is very certain that today God will visit you in a very remarkable way, praise the Lord. Someone that believes you are coming back here between now and next Sunday with an ear tingling testimony, praise the Lord. If you believe that this is your day, shout your loudest hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I decree in the name of Jesus, no one here will be a victim of any kind of armed robbery. No one here will be a victim of any kind of accident. Amen. No one here will be a victim of any kind of violence. Amen. No one here will be a victim of any kind of fire accident. Amen. Whatever the devil has planned or proposed against your family now, tomorrow, next tomorrow, throughout this year, I declare those plans and those arrangements terminated. Amen. Every satanic emergency is hereby terminated. Amen. Every satanic emergency is hereby terminated. Amen. No one at the sound of my voice or anyone connected to anyone hearing me shall run helter skelter. Amen. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon your life. I sprinkle the blood upon your family. I sprinkle the blood upon your house. I sprinkle the blood upon your properties. The voice of the blood of Jesus continues to speak against your enemies. In the name of Jesus. Nothing will tamper your peace. In Jesus' precious name. The Holy Ghost came. That's why I prayed that way. You can see there was nothing to connect the prayers. But the Holy Ghost came. God is your defense. So no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Are you hearing me? You will only hear of the news from other people. But nobody will hear such news from your mouth. You will only read from the newspapers what has happened to others. But nobody will hear any bad thing about your life. If you are saying amen, say it with understanding. Praise the Lord. Today is our Sunday service, uh, but it's also the eighth day of our fasting and uh, prayer campaign in this 40 days uh, prayer and fasting season. There will be service this evening, 5 o'clock to 7.30. Please endeavor to be there. I've said time and again that this period is going to be quite challenging. Don't succumb to the pressures of your challenges. Please don't. You'll be challenged in the area of finances. You'll be challenged in your body. You'll be challenged with time. You will challenge, be challenged with um, other things coming up that want to distract you from appearing. But please make up your mind to go through this with us. The price that changes destiny is usually paid once. 
every other thing we do will be to service what God has done. And I perceive very strongly in my heart that this season is a price that many people need to pay to move to the next levels of their lives. So please pay this price joyfully. This morning, while we were on the way to church, I was listening to uh, our father in the faith, Bishop David Oedipo, and he was talking about fasting. And I was saying to my sons with me in the vehicle, I said, did you hear that? Did you hear what he said about fasting? Did you hear what he said about fasting? So it's imperative that every one of us embrace and approach this season with serious minds. Don't be casual about anything in this kingdom, particularly these 40 days. Approach it with seriousness. I'm approaching this fasting season with desperation. There's a longing in me, there's a panting, there's a craving in the depth of my heart. I want to see the power of God. I want to see the glory of God. Not upon me, but upon you. So it's not like, oh, I'm, this fasting is my sacrifice to become a billionaire. The destiny of everyone in Christ is greatness. So I don't need to be convinced about my wealth of the future. I'm going to be very wealthy. So are you going to be? But I'm, I'm giving it my all. Asking God, God, let the heaven open over these ones. All the pain of last year, all the embarrassments will not repeat this year. I wish you would say a faith-filled amen. amen. So you give it your best also. Give it your best also. Praise the Lord. Have you prayed for somebody today? How many of you have prayed for somebody today? Let me see your hand up. You prayed for somebody today? Raise your hand. All right. What you just do for me, where you are seated, just take the hand of somebody to your right and to your left. And pray for that person that this week God will remember that person. Pray for that person that this week God will remember that person. Please do that with your heart. There are areas that person may be going through things. Please pray for that person that this way God will remember that person. Pray seriously. Pray that God will remember that person. Visit him with a testimony. Visit her with a testimony. Show him favor. Show her favor. Do something new. Do something new. An undeniable testimony. God, visit my brother. God, visit my sister. God, give my sister a testimony. God, meet my brother at the point of his need. God, meet my sister at the point of her need. I pray, please hold somebody's hand. Anyone coming in, just stand where you are. Don't hit people's hands. Just stand where you are. And hold somebody's hand and pray. Please stay where you are and hold somebody's hand and pray. Bless that person. Bless that brother. Bless that sister. Command the heaven over that brother to open. Wherever you are hearing my voice, you are a son of this commission, a daughter of this commission, get somebody's hand and hold now. If you can hear my voice, please get somebody's hand and hold now. And rain blessings. Rain blessings. Rain blessings. Prophesy blessings. Prophesy favor. Prophesy testimonies. Prophesy signs and wonders. Upon the life of that brother you are holding his hand. Upon the life of the sister you are holding her hand. Declare that God will remember that person. Declare that God will do something new. Declare that God will perform wonders. Declare that God will arise on his behalf. On her behalf. We will make their tears. Visit them with signs and wonders. God will make them dance. God will make them rejoice. God will make them celebrate. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You can let go of the hand now and give God thanks because you know he has answered your prayer for your brother. Has answered the prayer for your sister. In Jesus' precious name. 
one way to continually enjoy the flow of God's blessings upon your life is to sow blessings into other people's lives. The Bible says, Galatians 6, it says, God is no more. Be not deceived, God is no more. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Give, it shall be given unto you. Luke 6, 38a. Praise the Lord. We'll be sharing the testimonies in the second service. Uh, we, have, uh, we don't have so much time in this service. Remember, we'll share group testimonies. We'll take the testimonies that are already written by people. Then we'll now take the group testimonies. Or either way, we can do anyone first. I'll share with us this morning what I titled covenant living the secret to kingdom establishment covenant living the secret to kingdom establishment when we talk of establishment here we mean to be divinely fulfilled in all areas of your life establishment means to be divinely fulfilled you know as believers there is no fulfillment outside god the real fulfillment is fulfillment in god so it has little or nothing to do with money and all of those things it is to be fulfilled in god be where god wants you to be be who god wants you to be get what god wants you to get achieve what god wants you to achieve establishment simply means to be divinely fulfilled the word divine means in line with god's plans and purposes for your life for all areas of your life what do we mean by establishment to enjoy ceaseless and unstoppable growth and dominion in your world establishment here in the kingdom means to enjoy ceaseless and unstoppable growth and dominion in your world when we say ceaseless growth the bible says they go from strength to strength they don't go from strength to weakness ceaseless ceaseless means continuous growth they go from strength to strength they go from strength to strength another scripture says the part of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more so this up and down movement is not kingdom establishment please always take the scriptures as they come on the screen this up and down movement is not kingdom establishment. Kingdom establishment is when you go from one glory level to a higher glory level. So stagnation and retrogression are contrary to God's plan for your establishment in the kingdom. If, if you are not making progress, then you are not fulfilling God's plan for your life. God does not intend, expect, or believe that you should be stagnant or you should go backward. God does not intend it. Please don't forget that. Put that down. It's not God's intention. God does not intend it. Secondly, God does not expect it. For as he is, so are we in this world. So God does not expect it. And the third is that God does not believe it. You know why he does not believe it? If that same spirit, the same spirit that quickened Jesus dwell in you. Now the question is, do you have the Holy Spirit? If you have him, God does not believe you will fail. God does not believe you will fail. I have said that ye are God's and all of you are the children of the most high so god does not believe that you will fail and i decree in the name of jesus no one here fails Amen. 
I say no one here fails. I say no one here fails. And no one connected to you genuinely shall fail. In the name of Jesus Christ. Second Kings chapter 23, we read verses 2 and 3. Second Kings 23, we read verses 2 and 3. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests, and the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. Now begin to pay attention from here. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant. This is the book of the covenant, the Bible. Which was found in the house of the Lord. Verse 3. And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord. What covenant did he make? Let's read everybody from there. To walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their hearts and all their soul. To perform the words of this covenant that we are written in this book. Finish it finally. And all the people stood to the covenant. Now the word stood to the covenant means they agreed. So the, the king was not coercing them. The king was not, nobody was being first. It was not an imposition. The people said, what you have said, you've said are mine. We agree to everything you have said. Now please understand, in the biblical era, era of kings, apart from being administrative leaders, they also doubled as spiritual overseers. In the days of the kings, the kings also doubled as spiritual of us that's why there was a time when david came back from battle they were the men were hungry he went into the temple and he took shoe bread and ate and gave to other people ordinarily it's an exclusive preserve of prophets but in the era of kings kings doubled as spiritual leaders and today in the kingdom of god aside from our spiritual fathers and leaders every believer has same access to god unlike how it was in the old testament everybody has all of us have the same the only difference is the leadership caveats but all of us have equal access to to god now where we read we saw that a king who is a prophet or the pastor or the leader led all the genuine sons and daughters of his kingdom to make new covenants or renew their covenants with God. And where we saw in verse 2, the last line says, and all the people stood. They agreed to it. Not only did they agree, they lived up to it. So to stand by the covenant is not just to agree to do something because you can agree to do something and not do it. He said they, don't, they not only agreed to do it, they lived up to it. Covenant living is a secret to prosperity and stability in the life of any believer covenant living is a secret to stability and prosperity in the life of any believer hear this truth until you begin to live by covenant with god you will never experience unusual dimensions of his blessings there are blessings that we only be stories told from afar in the ears of a believer as long as that believer has not subscribed to covenant lifestyle there are testimonies you will never share others may share it because they're in the covenant but you will never share it because you have not subscribed to covenant lifestyle praise god there are miracles you may never witness personally Except you witness in the lives of others until you subscribe to covenant lifestyle. Now, in terms of lifestyle, let me show you something very crucial so that you know 
where you are and quickly begin to make adjustments or make readjustments. There are three categories of believers in every church in terms of lifestyle. How many categories? Three. In terms of lifestyle. The first category are those who live as they like. Those who live as they like. What does that mean? Living without the fear of God. What does that mean? They are hard-hearted believers. Their hearts are like stone. No matter what you say or do, they will do what they want. They live as they like. The Bible calls them reprobates. I will not use such word here because I don't believe any one of us has got it to that level. Nobody will get there in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible calls them reprobates. They have no regard for anyone. If they manage to have regard, it's only when they want to. So they offer you regard and they withdraw regard at will. They live as they like. God is not factored in their lifestyles. In fact, many times they even live like unbelievers. But let me warn you ahead of time. Anyone who lives as he likes in this kingdom ends in shame and failure. If you live a kind of Christian life that nobody can speak to you, nobody can talk to you, or no matter what is said, you do it anyhow you decide to do it, to do it by yourself and for yourself. It always ends in shame and failure. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 16, 25. One of the most sensitive scriptures in the Bible. Say, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Death is in levels. Business debt, your, your health collapses. Financially, you collapse, career collapses, things around you begin to fall apart, and then we have the, the major death, the cessation of vital signs. You cease to exist on this planet. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Don't be a believer who lives as you want. He says, My life, don't question me. That's wrong. It shouldn't be so in this kingdom. The second category of believers in every church are those who live by the mercy of God. Now put the mercy of God in quotes and I will explain it in a moment. Every one of us here are products of God's mercies. In fact, the scriptures are very clear on it. It is by his mercies that we are not consumed. God has his mercies on everyone. But that's not what it means to live by the mercy of God. Lamentations 3.22 is the scripture there. It is by his mercies, the, it's of the lost mercies that we are not consumed. But that's not what I'm talking about. That mercy dimension is God's free gift to everyone. That's why the rain will fall for the good man, fall for the bad man, and all of that. God will give life to a wicked man who is planning that when he wakes up tomorrow, he will go and rob and kill. That mercy is God's mercy to everybody. What do we mean by those who live by the mercy of God in quotes? They are believers who love God but are still struggling with weaknesses. So what do you have? After many years of being born again, they are still in elementary Christianity. And what is elementary Christianity? Asking for forgiveness of sin every day. They never grow out of sin. They just keep running around it in circles. So everything, every day of their life, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. God has already shown you mercy to keep you alive. God has already shown you mercy to provide for your needs. But you will not grow in the kingdom if you don't grow above sin. Such that it's not every day you, should, you shouldn't be coming to church to, commit, uh, to confess sin every day. Every day you wake up and say, Lord, I forgive me. I sinned against you yesterday. Forgive me. Let it be that you are asking for mercy for omissions, but not for commissions. If you're asking for mercy for omissions, it's understandable because no one person is perfect. No matter how good your works are, there will always be areas of error. But not deliberate errors have become patterns. There are people that prefer to live by the mercy of God. They lack discipline and self-control. They will never stand up and put an end to the things they are doing wrong. So instead of dealing with their weaknesses, they keep making excuses for sin. They love to pray for mercy 
confess sins and answer to altar calls always once you are saved you are not meant to be answering to altar calls always because it's expected that you grow in your work with god is somebody following with me this morning Romans 9 15 it says, For he saith to Moses, Romans chapter 9, verse 15, for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. He says, it's, it's me that shows mercy. It shouldn't be you every time you come and say, Lord mercy, Lord mercy, Lord mercy. You know what your weakness is, you know what your shortcomings are, you know your you know the area you are in discipline. Address these issues once and for all. Stop asking God for mercy. He has shown you mercy already. Address these issues once and for all. You can't be guilty of the same sin every other week, every other month, every other day. Samson went on that way. The day it backfired, he paid dearly for it. That will not happen to anyone here in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't live by the mercy of God. Be disciplined. The third group, or the third category of people in the church, are those who live by covenants those who live by covenants those who live by covenants so what is covenant living It is living a vow-based spiritual life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Covenant living is living a vow-based spiritual life. What does that mean? You make a decision personally, enter into agreement with God that guarantees god's help and support at all times as long as you keep to the terms of his word so you make a vow you make a vow you no more make excuses you make vows you no more make excuses you make vows the highest form of Christian living is covenant living. It takes you into a realm of power with God. It takes you into a realm of favor with God. It takes you into a realm of grace with God. The highest form of Christian living, please put that down. The highest form of Christian living is covenant living. God appeared to Abraham and said to Abraham, and said, my son Abraham, then he was still Abraham. He said, my son Abraham. God said, walk before me and be ye perfect. The word walk before me and be perfect simply means you have to keep to the terms of our covenants. And if you only do that on your part, then I will take care of the rest for you. And by reason of Abraham's personal de decision and commitment to obeying God's instruction, God swore to bless him. When you read Hebrews chapter 6, from 13 to 17, you see that very clearly. God swore and said, in blessing, I will bless you. God swore to bless Abraham. This is one of the most fearful scriptures I've ever read. Say, so when God made a promise to Abraham, he looked around. He said, how do I convince Abraham? How do I make Abraham know that what I've said will come to pass? He looked around. There was no one he could swear with. He swore by himself. He said, Abraham, I'm God. I'm the owner of heaven and earth. I have all power and I swear by myself that you, every promise I've made you, I will keep to the last bit if you say in covenant. Can I tell you one thing? You want to hear this truth? There is nothing, absolutely nothing, 
this kingdom cannot afford did you hear that sir there is nothing absolutely nothing that the kingdom of god cannot afford nothing you can't think of one thing nothing but only those who are in covenant will enjoy true kingdom riches when i see people in the kingdom so far like they don't know god as if there is no god we make it look like it's demons holding them which is holding them somebody tied them somebody buried them somebody did this one somebody cursed them no no move away from living anyhow you want and living up and down life in god to a life of covenant life of stability and sincerity with god that's when you will see that there is nothing this kingdom cannot afford can i say this to you in this kingdom your lifestyle determines your life's state in this kingdom the style of your life the lifestyle determines your life state so the way you live your life determines the kind of life that you'll be afforded in this kingdom it's straight on it's straight on god is a serious minded person so every believer is a product of his kingdom lifestyle every believer is a product you are not a product of your title you are a product of your kingdom lifestyle in case you are making money by dubious means funny funny ways a time will come the money will fail if you want real riches lasting riches lasting blessings lasting resources from heaven then you must subscribe to covenant lifestyle praise the lord praise the lord in the first and second services we're going to be focusing on the seven greatest covenant lifestyles for kingdom establishment the seven greatest covenant lifestyles for kingdom establishment kingdom establishment means kingdom promotion kingdom stability kingdom fulfillment that's what we mean there are too many words that you can use to qualify establishments kingdom promotion kingdom stability kingdom fulfillment such that you are not just doing well we're not talking about doing well we're talking about doing well according to god's plan and purpose for your life become an envy amongst others someone here will rise to become an envy amongst men in the name of jesus you don't want to become an envy if you are not envy then you don't have value if people ever envy something then it has value and i'm prophesying to you someone here will rise to become an envy to your generation let your amen be loud and faithful the first of the greatest covenant lifestyles for kingdom establishment is the covenant of soul winning teachers the covenant of soul winning soul winning turns ordinary men to kingdom stars people can be nobodies in quote when they come into the kingdom but the moment they develop addiction to soul winning they rise from obscurity to limelight I found out something from my own little level in this kingdom all those who love souls live well in this kingdom all those who love souls live well the Lord said to me many years ago you want me to raise an army around you he said cry when they cry rejoice when they rejoice go to any land for them whatever is in your power to do for anyone do it what you won't do is what you can't do 
if you can do this for me then you have set a platform for me to surround you with men of value and women of value It's so deeply embedded in me that if I have the slightest knowledge that today is your birthday, you will get a message from me. Now, it's not, it's not that because we are few, no. Even if this church, when this church goes to thousands, hundreds of thousands, at least within my sphere, I'll be able to reach out to everyone I can. God loves man so much and man remains at the center of everything he does the secret is simple if you learn to love man the way God loves man God will love you please understand this understand this as bad as men are God still does not want any soul to perish You read John 3, 16, you see how God loved the world. He gave us only because of But if you start reading from 17 down, you will now see the heart of God. John 3, 16, we all know it. But from verse 17 down, you start to see, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And on and on and on. Praise God. Now, here it is. If you love souls, God will love you. The depth of your love for God is determined by your, the quality of your love for souls. The depth of your love for God is what determines God's love for you. Listen, if God will love you deeply, then you must love souls deeply. I say this without any out of deception or bias whatever is within me to do for anyone reachable i'll do it i've given things i don't have talking of things i have i borrow to give and so when people anybody fighting you to fail we fail because you love souls you will give anything you do anything praise god Now, please know this. Soul winning demands that we go about our lives seeking to bring men to God. Everything we do for them, in them, around them, is to draw them to God. That's what soul winning is all about. Soul winning is not give, helping somebody and walking away. That's not soul winning. That one is arms giving. Soul winning is doing everything within your power to bring somebody to God or to keep somebody in God. So you go to any length. You go to any length you can to encourage the discouraged, to strengthen the weak hands, to strengthen the feeble knees, whatever you can do. Somebody says, I, I don't come to church because I don't have transport. There is no genuine member, I say this with all humility before God, there is no genuine member in this church that will say transport is his problem. Nobody in this church. Nobody. You know why? Many times I've said to you, if you don't have transport to come to church, go meet any of the pastors or the PA. It will be given to you. They will quickly make arrangements and make sure. So, you don't have, you can't say transport, transport, transport. Maybe because of wisdom. Some people will say, ah, the church is not supposed to be given me. I'm supposed to be given to the church. It's understandable. But not to say that my reason for not coming to church is transport. It's not done in this place. And I've never seen a church who does like that at all. I was with a pastor in one of the great churches. I won't call the name for honor's sake. And the woman came, she was complaining. I was sitting there, the woman was complaining bitterly how things are rough, how things are hard, how this and that, this and that. That church is one of the richest churches in the world today. And I was surprised, and my pastor friend said to her, Well, uh, we have no money. When the woman left, I said, ah, Man of God, how can you say I have no money? 
this church itself is like a bank he said no no listen we only spend what is approved once it's exhausted even if somebody's dying we won't spend any money anywhere again i shook my head i said i wish you come and preach to my members so they were here we will go to any land for anyone that's a law for souls if you develop that you'll be established in this kingdom just a matter of time is somebody hearing it start with evangelism the foundation for soul winning is evangelism evangelism is not so winning so winning it is a foundation for soul winning what is in evangelism you talk to people about jesus christ talk to people about the church talk to people about god's servants give them flyers invite them to church maybe go drive them to church maybe pay their transport to church and all of that but so winning is when you have done all this and you ensure that that person is rooted in god you have won that soul you don't bring somebody to church and then you, you abandon them yes i'm sure i brought him to church i leave the rest for pastor and his members or evangelism unit no you have not won a soul you have only won a soul when you have successfully grounded that person so the person comes to church we take that person and teach them take them through new converse class and all of those things then you serve as a follow-up agent until they are rooted in god the moment they are rooted in god that soul is counted to you as a soul one so no soul is counted to you as your soul until they are rooted in god because god could have used anybody else to preach or advertise so you follow them up until they are grounded in the things of god praise god there are people that when they were still little little children in, in the things of god I will serenade them with all everything. But as they began to grow and get matured, I, I, have, I started allowing them. Because as a baby, you need meal. But when you start growing, you need solid food. So he doesn't give me money the way he used to give me. No, I can't be giving you like that anymore. Because now you have known God, you have known what it takes to reproduce. We channel those strength and energy to those who, used to, who are like you now, the way you used to be before. Be a soul winner. I said to somebody, be a soul winner. Say to somebody, be a soul winner. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Jesus speaking, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It is God's mandate on every believer to preach the gospel. All of us. In your small environment, your small cubicle, your work environment, the school environment, God mandates us to preach the gospel. Proverbs 11.30 The B part, it says, And he that winneth souls is wise. Once you make soul winning your covenant hobby, you are set to fly high in this kingdom. Please look on the screen before you. You have no business with my screen. Let me not catch anybody looking like this. See your screen. If you didn't see anything, you look at your, your, your neighbor's notes. That's where things are. Let's behave with decorum. You shouldn't be sitting there and turning to be looking at this screen. This is for me. This one is for you. Is that correct? If you don't believe it, ask me there. Once so winning becomes your covenant hobby, you are set to fly high. Proverbs 11.30. Now, look at Daniel 12.3. Let me show you. Daniel 12.3 is a life-changing scripture. Knowing this scripture should charge everybody up. We read together, everybody together. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Stop there. They that be wise. If you look at Proverbs 11, 30, where we read, who is a wise man? He that winneth souls. So, Proverbs 11, 30 confirms Daniel, Daniel to us that anyone that says so winner is wise. And then Daniel says, they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Continue with me. And they that turn many to righteousness shall shine. Oh, that's what it means. As the stars forever. For how long? Forever and ever. 
they remain relevant in God's agenda of things here on earth forever. Praise God. That's why our fathers are unmovable because they are so winners. They'll be pre- That's one of the reasons, one of the advantages we have. You are going to be here preaching the gospel all the days of your life. You, you can't help being relevant. Because as long as you commit to soul winning, impacting on God's people, directing God's people, you shine. Praise the Lord. You want establishment in this kingdom? Every one of us at our own different levels must become soul winners. That is what we call noiseless, noiseless impact. Noiseless. You, you can be powering a family to church. For years, nobody will know. You can be encouraging a brother side to church. In church, for years, nobody will know. That is basically when you understand that you are doing this thing for yourself, not for them. Because most times when you hear people talk anyhow, it's because they think they are doing somebody a favor. And that's where the reward stops. So we look at somebody say, be a soul winner. And do it with joy. One more time, say, be a soul winner. And do it with joy. The second covenant lifestyle that will guarantee the establishment of any believer in this kingdom is the covenant of purity. The covenant of purity. Purity is the lifestyle of unbroken holiness and sanctity. Purity is the lifestyle of unbroken not off and on unbroken holiness and sanctity purity is living a spotless christian life before god and men now there's no doubt that not everybody will like you or love you not everybody will be impressed with you but at all costs you make sure that you live a life that is spotless a christian life that is spotless before god and men now, hear what the Lord said to me in very strong terms. If you are not sanctified, you cannot be satisfied in this kingdom. So, if you are not sanctified in God, you cannot be satisfied by God. Don't forget that. If you are not sanctified in God, you cannot be satisfied by God. There is no shortcut. If you are not sanctified in God, you cannot be satisfied your God. So it is your sanctity that guarantees your sanity in this kingdom. Is somebody hearing me? It is your sanctity that guarantees your sanity in this kingdom. If you must remain safe, safe from dangers, safe from attacks, safe from arrows, safe from wickedness, safe from the aggressions of the enemy, then you must remain saved. If you must remain safe in your walk with God, then you must remain saved. So when your salvation is tampered, your protection is tampered, you may not die, but certain areas Satan begins to creep in. When your salvation is tampered, your protection is tampered. And don't join the group that says, once saved, always saved. Because the Bible says, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. That means you have to be committed to walking out your salvation day in, day out. So don't say, once you are saved, you are saved. Once they are saved, they are saved. Once they are saved, they are saved. You can't beat the Holy Spirit. He knows you. He will remind you of your heart. With all the cover up, he will tell you that you know. You know yourself. So don't say once saved, always saved. There are many people who were once saved, now they are suffering. Poverty, sicknesses, even untimely deaths. The question is why? To a very large extent, the covenant of purity is broken. So it makes them vulnerable to the devil, the enemy of believers. 
Move away from confessing sin daily and go to a life of holiness. Praise God. Job chapter 8, we read 6 and 7. Job chapter 8, we read 6 and 7. He said, If thou wert pure and upright, surely now he would awake for thee and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. You know what that means? He said, If you were straightforward, that's what word means if you were. If you were pure, walking in purity, if you were upright with God, he said, God will surely arise for you, he will awake for you. And as long as your habitation remains a habitation of righteousness, God will make you prosperous. It's simple. Simple. And the next verse finishes it. He said, even though your beginning was small, yet the latter end should greatly increase. So it doesn't matter how you come to Christ. He said, even if you came as a papa, you came as a nobody, in quotes. You know, every time I say nobody, I say in quotes, because nobody's really nobody. Even if you came without... Uh, you can't you, nothing to write home about you. He said, if you are pure and upright, he said, even though your beginning was small, I will make your latter end great. Praise the Lord. Don't let the devil deceive you about purity. In Hebrews chapter 1, 8 and 9. Hebrews chapter 1, 8 and 9. He said, but unto the son he saith. The word saith means continuously. Not he said. If you say said, it has gone into the past tense. He said, but unto the son he said. That means he's still saying it today. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A setter of righteousness is the set of thy kingdom. Verse 9. Everybody together now. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. The word above means promotion. I will make you stand out. Then shall you come and discern between those who worship God and those who don't worship Him. It's clear in the Bible. Then you will purity. Then you will come and discern between those who worship and those who don't worship Him. Now, purity is not only abstinence from sin, sexual sins, lying. Some people have, they don't commit sexual sins but their hearts are corrupted rebellious hearts because satan is very funny when we preach you say you just might say well this one is not for me i'm not in this category some of some people have very demonic hearts rebellious hearts Sometimes the things that God will show me about certain people that who easily castigate others who make other areas of mistakes, I just smile. I say, This one doesn't even know he's not a candidate for blessing. Because their hearts are dark. They are smiling and say, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Their hearts are dark. God will say, Look at his hearts. Come and see come, come his hearts. At least this one who has acted in error, I've seen his heart. I'll forgive him if he confesses. But this one, his heart is dark. It brings all the impression that he's there, but his heart is dark. Praise God. So you start from inside out. What did I say, sir? You start from where? Inside out. Start from inside out. Start from inside out. You, you don't stay there and condemn everybody. You, you have a dark heart. You don't lie. You don't steal. You don't commit fornication. You don't commit adultery. But you have a rebellious heart. There's no difference. There is no special hell for the liar and a special hell for the thief. Hell is hell. So I hear. Once you make purity your lifestyle, God will make prosperity his priority. Once you make purity your lifestyle, God will make your prosperity his priority. Once you make purity your lifestyle, God will make your prosperity his priority. It's simple. Put it down. Once you make purity your lifestyle, God will make your prosperity his priority.
Number three, secret, covenant secret, covenant lifestyle, covenant attitude. That will guarantee your establishment in this kingdom and in life. Is the covenant of attending to the word of God daily. The covenant of attending to the word of God daily. The covenant of attending to the word of God daily. When studying the word of God becomes your natural reflex. Prosperity becomes norm, a norm in your life. You, you see, there are things you can't go a day without doing. Is that true? Every sane person. For example, you will hardly be comfortable going out from morning to night not brushing your teeth. Is that true? You will hardly be comfortable going out without having a bath. And of course, none of you here can go out naked. You have a covenant with your clothes. So much so that if they get dirty, you wash them. Iron them. Sometimes you wear them without ironing. Because you have a covenant with your clothes. You must. You must. Anyone that wants stability in this kingdom, one of the covenants you must operate is a covenant of attending to the word of God daily. If you are too busy to study the word, you are too busy for God to bless you. You have no good excuse, sir. You say, I'm, I'm busy. The kind of work I do does not give me time. You have time to work an ephemeral job, a transient job, a job that has no bearing on your destiny whatsoever. But you don't have time for the eternal word of God. He said, we know by faith, Hebrews 11 says, by faith we know the words we are framed by the word of God. So destinies are designed and delivered on the platform of the world. You don't have time for something eternal, but you have time for something ephemeral. You are confused. You are, you are placing the cart before the horse. Praise God. How do you become a good student? An A student. You read your notes daily. Is that not true? You don't need to be a prophet to know a student that will make A. If you want to know a student that will make A, watch their attitude towards their books. That's all. Prayer is not what you need. Watch their attitude. Other people are going for lunch, they're going for break, they're going for exercise, they're going for evening party, they're going for visitation, they're going to hang out with their friends. This one marries his book. Everybody knows he will make an A. The more intimacy he has with his books, the more he raises his chances, improves his chances for higher grades. You, you know, this generation is a very careless generation. Somebody will not say, my lecturer gave me, my lecturer gave me C. He gave me C. But other people gave them A. So what was the criteria for the giving? Say, he gave me D. Do you know there's a level of dedication you have to your book? If anybody tries to victimize you, you will embarrass him. The man messes you up. You write against him and say, well, set another exam. Praise God. Set another exam. Somebody wrote IELTS. It's a British examination. And when the scores came out, the person transmitted them to me. And I said, that's not your result. Something is wrong somewhere. He says, sir, I wrote to, but I'm not sure. I said, well, let me tell you that I'm sure that this is not your result. And so I said, apply for a marking. He paid the money and applied for a marking. When they remarked, he, they gave him his actual grade and he passed. He was trying to do this Canada something. Now, he worked very, very hard. Very, very hard. But another person wrote, who did not even have time. He will come back from work and just read for one hour and then drop his book. When the results came out, they were poor. The person said the same thing to me. He said, sir, I want to apply for the marking. I said, for you, no the marking. What you have is what you deserve. Am I talking to somebody? If you want to become a champion in this kingdom, 
you must enter into a covenant not to go a day of your life without studying the word of God. In my own little way, I present you with Bible study manuals every day. There's a reason you have two chapters. So it gives you quality time. You read a verse in less than a minute, but to read a chapter will take you time. So that's to create some kind of relaxation with the word so that you read it morning and night. And over time, it be, you are what you eat. Over time, it begins to reform, transform you, and reposition you for a life of impact. And I've said to us many times, the word is powerful in the mouth of a man that has light. If you quote scriptures without light, nothing will happen. That's why believers say, I don't quote Bible tired. No. The only time the word of God becomes effective in your mouth is when you have light in it. And how do you gain light? By meditation. You sit with it. You eat it. You regurgitate it. You meditate on it. You confess it until it becomes a part of you. When you speak from that point, you have light. Am I talking to somebody? How many of you know the Lord is my shepherd? I shall know one. Let me see your hand up. If you don't know it, bring your hand up. If you know it, bring your hand up. Let me see your hand. I'm serious now. How many of you know it? Now bring it down. Now, how many of you have everything you want? Bring your hand up. Why now? Can God lie? Is it not, not a shepherd again? I'm asking, is it not a shepherd again? You know why? We quote scriptures without light. So you sit down. You sit down with the word. You sit down with the word. And can I say this to you? The word of God is God. The word of God is the womb of creation. There is nothing God will give a man that he doesn't deliver via the vehicle of his word. The word of God is a conduit for the delivery of all of God's plans for a man. So if you don't have relationship with the word of God, you actually don't have relationship with God. Did you hear what I just said now? So it is your level of relationship with the word of God that determines your level of relationship with God. If you are one, you open Bible, some of us, we open, you come here, you, you make your notes, and then you go home and close them. Do you know why the Bible ends in the book of Revelation? Do you know why? Why the Bible ends in Revelation is because the word of God does not end in Revelation. It actually goes on from Revelation. So everything you have in your notes are extensions of the word of God. That's why it ends in Revelation. So God continues to reveal and reveal and reveal and reveal. Your notes can qualify as your secondary Bible. Is somebody hearing me? Because the Bible stops with Revelation. The, the direct word of God stops with Revelation. And then we continue with the revelation of God to his servants, to us. But some of us, we never open our notes for weeks. It's only when you come to church, you now open. Attend to the word of God daily. Let it be a covenant lifestyle and nothing will stop your greatness. The word can become anything. The word can become anything. And the word became flesh. That was the same word Eli spoke to Hannah and the word became Samuel. That was the same word Jesus spoke and the word became wine. Turned water to wine. That was the same word Jesus spoke and Lazarus. The word became life. The word became flesh. The word can become anything. So get it into your system. 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 That's when you become an authority in this kingdom. If you decree a thing, it will be established. Praise God. We have John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. We're not reading that. Let's read Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Very popular scripture, but we do not pay attention to that scripture. We just read it for emphasis sake. Now we read it everybody together. Word by word. One after the other. Let's read together one to go. This book of the law. Now what is the book of the law? The Bible. Including your notes. Continue with me. Shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate 
therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then shall thy make thy way shall thou make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have simple it's very simple he said he said the approved dosage for the world is day and night did you see that sir they approved there are pastors who don't even read bible day and night the approved dosage for the world is day and he said you will meditate during day and night it is from there that we have breakfast and dinner lunch and all of those things so you want to grow eat the world the way you eat food Praise God. Job became so wealthy because he loved the world. He said, Lord, I, I love your world. I prefer your world more than my necessary food. Your testimonies are more important to me than my necessary food. That's how he became a mighty man. You want establishment? Your love for the world has to change. Your attitude towards the word of God has to change. Has to change. Praise the Lord. There are things you hear me teach here and I will show you certain Bible verses and you'll be wondering, so this place is in the Bible. You know why? It is the product of spending quality time with the Word of God. Product of spending quality time with the Word of God. You search the scriptures, you tear them line by line, page by page. There are points I will raise here and I'll bring scriptures you'll be wondering, ah, this one is there too. And there is nothing you can't find in the world. Nothing. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 33. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 33. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, Although I was an husband unto them, said the Lord. But this shall be the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord. Let's read from there, everybody together. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Did you see that? Say the word will enter where? Your inward parts. How do you know you are full of, full of the world? When your reaction to circumstances is the world. When things happen, the first thing, your first reaction is the world. Some of us, our first reaction is pick up our phones. Our first will be, hey! You want establishment? Make a covenant to attend to the word of God daily. Daily. Praise the Lord. Now let me quickly begin to conclude on this. In the next service, we'll, we'll finish the remaining four. On the platform of the world, there is nothing impossible. Nothing impossible. Nothing impossible. Nothing impossible. On the platform of the world, nothing is impossible. That's why you observe in every environment where the word was being spoken in the bible miracles happen in every environment where jesus was speaking miracles were happening they will just come and say ah let's wait for him in every world environment there is an atmosphere of signs and wonders so every time you open your bible god opens your page every time you open your bible god remembers you because opening your bible simply means you are connecting to heaven to say my father speak to me so god's attention is channeled to you every time you open your bible god remembers you don't forget this because every time you open the bible you're simply saying lord i'm here now i want you to speak to me he remembers you immediately praise the lord praise the lord some days ago we we're here in, in god's presence and one of my sons in course of teaching the word the holy ghost came and jesus said Everybody, let's pray. The mother will not see shame. How many of you were here that day? Some people were here that day. 
Say, let's pray now. It was a very simple matter, but that woman would have gone to jail. I pray he shares his testimony. If you see the way Jesus turned the story around, the people that were supposed to put the woman into trouble were now giving her accommodation and making her comfortable. In the atmosphere of God's world, there is no impossibility. Did you hear me, sir? God came into an environment that was void, there was no form, it was dark, everything was out of place. The moment he opened his mouth, things took a different tone. The moment God opened his mouth, light came from his mouth. The waters were divided from his mouth. Trees came from his mouth. Everything you see created came from his mouth. Every time God opens his mouth, he pours out treasures upon your life. Why won't you open your Bible so that God can speak to you? Why are you too busy? Why are you too busy? Why are you too busy? People download all kinds of things on their phones. They download Bibles, but I can tell you the least used download is the Bible for many believers, for a majority of them. All your music download will be playing on repeat from morning to night. Facebook available morning to night. Instagram is your second house address. WhatsApp, of course, that's your destiny. But the word of God has no attention. You don't pay attention to the word of God. 8.50, that the first night, the Holy Ghost said to me, now, remove WhatsApp from your phone. I quickly deleted it. 8.50. That's yesterday also. Yesterday. Not yesterday, day before it's Friday. As we finished vigil on Friday, as I was going back, he now said, put the WhatsApp. I downloaded the WhatsApp, but I found out that between that Friday and another day today, I have no appetite for the thing again. No appetite. I saw over 3,000 messages. I have no appetite for the thing again. You know what he now said to me? In your work with me, there is nothing you cannot live without. There is nothing you cannot live without. Nothing. There is nothing you cannot live without. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. The only thing you cannot live without is the word of God. That's by your phone, your, those things don't mean anything. No appetite again. In fact, I'm just thinking of deleting it because I don't see the need for it. Some people say, you know, that's why people are able to reach you, those who cannot afford credit. That's not the issue. The most important person in God's plan for your life is you. Whatever you will do to stay in the center of God's plan for your life, just stay there. There's nothing wrong with the WhatsApp, don't misunderstand me. But the way God relates to us is different. He was just trying to show me that you can do without this thing. You can do without this thing. But by my, my word is what you need all the day long. Do you know if I were, I, I wouldn't want to do that so I don't embarrass certain people. If I were to say, How many of you have not read from your Bible man in the last three days? Hands will go up. Should we try? Even here, now, as I'm talking now, here now, here now, 80% of you, okay, 89% of you, okay, 90% of you. The Holy Ghost is saying, You know, he's a statistics man. As I was calculating, it was improving. It, it, 90% of here, you see this small enclave now. One, two, three, four. Here, 90% have not sat down with your Bible manual for the last 24 hours. Here now. Praise God. How do you want to become a champion? When Satan confronted Jesus, Jesus will quote, he will quote, Jesus will quote, he will quote. See how Jesus defeated him. Jesus went away from quoting scriptures. He invoked scriptures. Jesus said, it is written. Satan said, it is written. Jesus said, it is written. Satan said, it is written. Jesus now said, it is said. The moment Jesus said, it is said, Satan knew that at this level, he had no revelation of what he was talking. Satan had no revelation of what he was talking. He, he knew he was quoting out of deception. 
Imagine him saying to Jesus, come and fall from this pinnacle. The whole world is mine. I'll give them to you. Does Satan look like somebody that will hand over the world to somebody? He was just quoting them. Jesus said that he was just trying to. So he took it to another. He said, it is said, you shall worship the Lord that God. Satan said, okay, sir. I'm here to worship. I'm going. Praise God. Every environment of the world is an environment of signs and wonders. Don't forget that. Surround yourself with the word of God. Load up your phones. Some of us even have worldly songs. So we have worldly songs. Worldly songs. We have worldly songs. We have worldly songs. Worldly songs. It says it depends on the mood. It depends on the mood. I wonder what mood you will be in. I wonder what mood you will be in that will make you. I wonder. Don't you know that what you expose yourself to chooses your mood? It shouldn't be your mood that chooses what you expose yourself to. It is what you expose yourself to. Did you get that, sir? So I want to feel good, I go for my Bible. I want to feel strong, I go for my Bible. I want to be encouraged, I go for my Bible. One of our brothers, two years ago, was driving on the street. I was walking down the street. He didn't see me. He's com- he was coming from a distance. I was hearing, bing, 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 bing. I didn't know it was him. As I saw the guy from a distance. I said, this person blowing this thing. By the time it's 80s, yeah, we will finish you. I was just saying in my mind, though. I said, okay, what is wrong with this person? As he approached me close, even himself, he saw me. And it was, I, was waved, I waved him down. Instead of him to stop in front of me, he passed me and went down. And then reduced the thing. He was not trying to change the song. Before I now walked up, I opened it and entered. I said, don't worry, I heard it from a distance. Don't worry. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I heard it from a distance. He said, Shay, Daddy, you know, sometimes you just use these things to make yourself happy. Really? You really, really? Really? What is Davido's agenda in your destiny? What is Whiskey's agenda in your destiny? Who is your savage to your destiny? Are you okay? Think about what I'm talking about. I'm not joking about these things. You do things that directly influence your destiny in God. Champions will rise. I say champions will rise. I say champions will rise. In the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost just said to me, somebody was searching the Bible. He said, this thing pastor said, it is said. Are you sure it's correct? Let me show you. Let me show you. I love the Holy Spirit very well. <laughs> he said the person is like this. I'm not joking. Anybody like that? Be, be honest. Anybody like that? Raise your hand. Okay, you see that. Even you too. You know, Sam. The Holy Ghost, I heard him clearly. Sincerely, sir. Is that what you were thinking? I heard him clearly. He said, somebody said, ah, this is where Pastor talk. He just said, the Bible. Let me show you. You see, you see, you see when you walk with the Holy Spirit, if I tell you I heard him, my friend, I heard him. It's not your ears, it's my ears. And you tell me, I say I heard him, say, you sure say hear him. Did, is he your ears? <laughs> Praise God. God bless you, my brother. Holy Spirit, God bless you. <laughs> Luke chapter 4. We'll read from verse 8 to verse 12, and then we'll conclude this service. Are you ready? From verse 8 to verse 12. Well, let's read together everybody and jesus answered and said unto him get thee behind me satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shall thou serve verse 9 and he brought him to jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him if thou be the son of god cast thyself down from hence for it is written he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee verse 11 and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Verse 12, everybody. And Jesus answering him said unto him, It is said. 
Praise God. Jesus said it is said. Boy, I'm quoting what I know. I'm the word. I'm the, you get to a point where you become the mobile Bible. He said, I'm the word. You can't quote me. I'm the word. Praise God. Say it is said. I'm the word. You don't quote me. You can't know me more than me. Praise God. Make the word of God your best friend. You know, I'm happy people question some things we say and the Holy Ghost will give you feedback. And you will show that you have gone, you have researched, proper research. You don't, your pastor is a research rat. Boy, I chew Bible with all humility before God. So I won't come here and joke because I preach for a living. I'm not preaching for, to impress you. The way I do it here is what determines how the thing flows from here. Shall we all rise to our feet and celebrate God's word? Celebrate the word of God if you are blessed. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me. The covenant lifestyle is the highest form of relationship with God. The covenant lifestyle is the highest form of relationship with God. The covenant of soul winning, the covenant of purity, and the covenant of attending to the word of God daily. Ask God for his grace upon your life. 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 Ask the Holy Ghost to empower you for soul winning. Ask the Holy Ghost to empower you for purity. Ask the Holy Ghost to empower you to attend to the word of God daily. Pray with all of your hearts. Ask him, ask him, ask him, ask him, ask him. No one can be strong except with the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our greatest advantage in this kingdom. Ask him for the grace. Ask him to strengthen you, to build up your hunger, your task for the word of God. To build up your hunger, your task for purity. To build up your hunger, your task for soul winning. Talk to him with all of your hearts. Lord, I want to be pure before you. Lord, I want to be an addicted soul winner. Lord, I want to love your word. I want to be one who is addicted to your word day in, day out. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now make a covenant with God that from today, by the help of the Holy Spirit, you will be a constant soul winner. You will walk in purity. You will attend to his word daily. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Make a covenant with God that by the help of His Spirit, you will be a covenant soul winner. You will operate in purity. You will develop an addiction for the Word of God. Make that covenant. It will help you. Sometimes you, you are not sure how you will keep it, but if you have a decision, He will help you. That's how it operates in this kingdom. Sometimes, even as you're saying it, you're asking yourself, Am I sure I can keep this? That's why we have the Holy Spirit, He's there to help us. So make that covenant. And ask that by his spirit, he empowers you to do all that. Be a soul winner, live in purity, and most importantly, be addicted to his word on a daily basis. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, again, we thank you for your word in season. We are mightily blessed by your word. We have cut out covenant with you today. The covenant of soul winning the covenant of purity, the covenant of attending to your word. No man can sustain covenant agreements with you except by the help of your spirit. Therefore, I ask for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon every heart and every person that is in this auditorium today. Everyone at the reach of my voice receives divine empowerment. We rise from here to become believers that we love souls. We rise from here to become believers that will love righteousness. Amen. We rise from here to become believers that will love the word of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I cause every distraction, every manipulation, 
every attempt of the devil to derail us from what you have heard today i frustrate them in the name of jesus thank you for the work of your spirit in us in jesus christ's name we have prayed take your offering let's honor god with our offerings everybody take your offering let's honor god with our offerings everybody Raise that offering to the Lord and thank Him for all His blessings upon your life. I appreciate Him right now with all of your heart. Lord, I thank You. You have been good to me. There is no doubt about it. I'm a living proof of supernatural supply. I'm a living proof that You are Jehovah Jireh. Thank You. I present the token of love to You. Not the best You have given me, but a token of love. Accept my offerings and bless me mightily. In Jesus' precious name. Cast your offering with joy. Please, you may be seated, everybody. Choir. In you I put my trust to quote Kike. Everything I am, I owe to you. Oh, be the way. All to have for you to do. You are bigger than what we call you. Oh, daddy. In you I put my trust. Shout hallelujah. Please be seated for just uh, two minutes. Choir, please, let's all get seated, please, everybody. If you're here this morning, you know you've not given your life to Jesus Christ, or you want to rededicate your life to him, you have another opportunity to do that. We're in a kingdom where God's arms are always wide open. God is not like man who condemns. The moment you accept your errors and you are willing to make amends, God is ready. You say, God, I need your strength. It may not necessarily be that you are committing one, the one you call grievous. The ones we don't even see as anything are the ones that hold people down the more. You are here this morning, you want to give your life to Jesus, you've not given your life to Jesus, or you want to rededicate your life to him, you have one more opportunity to do that. I'll give you just one minute just one minute to do that don't look at anybody don't look at anybody's face don't consider what anybody will say you live alone you die alone even if 50 people die in the bus everybody goes into destiny and eternity alone is somebody hearing me even if 50 people die in one bus the other day around some something people would perish in a plane crash i was going from i think uh, iran or so to 
one of the Eastern Europe countries, as all of them perished, everybody is going to face eternity personally. We don't go in group. So don't let anybody's approval, anybody's reaction be your parameter for choosing when or where to come. Because I always have issues of when I go down, after service, people come to me and say, sir, pray for me. It's not necessary. I'm not Jesus. This is Jesus standing here now. Praise the Lord. We thank God for your salvation in Jesus' name. We have testimonies, so please uh, make sure you submit your testimonies to the media units. Uh, we did something prophetically during the week, the last week, and uh, we'll be showing it off today in terms of testimonies, I mean. So we want to share a testimony in person. You know, we did group agreement, you remember? We want to share a testimony in person, you will just come out and take that testimony, and then we'll take the ones on take the ones online the ones that people sent in way before now we continue this teaching in the second service and please i encourage you to be a part of it because covenant living is crucial for our destiny in this kingdom most importantly today is the eighth day in our 40 days fasting and prayer campaign we shall continue in the evening the time is 5 p.m to 7 30 p.m be here no excuses be here and please don't forget, all through the week, it gets more intensive all through the week. Morning sessions, 9 a.m. to 12 noon. You see that on the screen closest to you. 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Evening sessions, 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And then we have the midnight sessions, 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. or 12 midnight to 3 a.m. Be a part of all of this. The price that changes destiny is usually paid once. Other things you do is to service what God has given. So be a part of this. The Lord will bless you as you do that in Jesus' name. If this is your first time watching with us on a Sunday service, just wave your hands wherever you are. If this is your first time in this place, just do like this. Please celebrate them. You are waving your hand. Don't shake him. This one is the son of the ministry. You see now, he was absent minded. I don't dash him that shake. Give to the first time. Celebrate the first time as close to you. You see what we're saying? You are waving your hand, you see? <laughs> because you have already reached home. You're all welcome in Jesus' name. We're excited to have you be a part of this service. The name of the church is Peace City Church International. It is also known as the Home of Peace. On the screen closest to you, you see our days of activities. Every Sunday we have two services. First is 8 a.m., second is 10 a.m. Every Wednesday, miracle service, 5.30 p.m. daily. Every Wednesday, sorry. And then every Friday, special prayer service, 5 p.m. First, second, and third of every month, we have week of supernatural encounters, and our monthly thanksgiving is third or last Sundays of every month. Now, I just introduced the 40 days fast. In case you want to build up yourself spiritually, tap into what God has, join us any of those services during the course of this 40 days fast. It will end on the 13th of February 2020. You are sure to be blessed as you come in Jesus' name. Please stretch your hands towards any first time I closest to you and pour out the blessing from your heart pour out the blessing on that person don't let that person go the same way they came you are there to reach out to them there is something you carry in you that if you speak god will do it so pour out the blessing lavishly on that person the lord bless you the lord favor you the lord enlarge your cause the lord honor you the lord increase you the lord show you mercy bless you mightily beyond the expectations in jesus name we have prayed one more time you're welcome shall we all rise to our feet please stretch your hands towards this altar and let us thank god for the wisdom we continue to make contact with from this altar by his spirit and say lord we thank you for continually supplying your wisdom to your servant felix oh lord we ask that as jesus increase in wisdom cause him to increase in wisdom stature and favor with god and man pray in the name of jesus christ lord we thank you thank him first when you thank god for the last you qualify for the next Thank him for the revelation, for the insight, for the blessings, for the empowerment, for the encouragement, for the chastisement, for the discipline that comes from this altar. And ask him to increase his servants in wisdom and stature. The quality of wisdom on the altar is what determines the quality of wisdom you operate at. So please ask God to help that wisdom will continue to grow on this altar. Wisdom will continue to grow on this altar. In Jesus' name we have prayed lastly you will prophesy to the week ahead of you this is our year of all round fulfillment you will prophesy to this week this is usually the first of the week by our own calendar as christians 
he will decree what do you want to see this week now go prophetic pray in the name of jesus christ the lord shall perfect that which concerned me go prophetic now what do you want to see this week put that scripture on the screen psalm 138 verse 8 the lord shall perfect that which concerned me put it on the screen what do you want to see this week prophesy it prophesy it prophesy it prophesy it he said that shall surely decree a thing and it shall be established unto you the light to shine on your path prophesy it what do you want to see this week the mercy of god will be upon me god will not forsake me god will reach out to me he will bless me mightily god will honor me god shall favor me this week i must testify to the glory of god in jesus name we have prayed god has heard us shall we all give him thanks for hearing us lord we thank you again and again for hearing us in jesus precious name let's share the grace together everybody the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now forever amen surely this message shall follow us all the days of our lives we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever amen praise the lord um, just four minutes and we'll start the next service i've been informed that the ministry of ministry of health reverse ministry of health they are here please um, if, if anything will be done